The Gauteng Youth Expo is currently underway at Nazareth Expo Center in Johannesburg under the theme Youth Moving Gauteng City Region Forward. The program is focused on the sharing of information crucial for the development and empowerment of young people in the province. The Gauteng MEC for Sports, Arts and Culture Mbali Klope joins me now in the studio to talk a little bit more about it. A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. So just looking at the expo itself, what kind of information is in the salient point? So if we're saying that it's about sharing information for the development of youth, what information would that be specifically? What we've done, the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, together with the Department of Education, we've come together to ensure that we make the cost of getting information very cheap for young people. You know that there's a lot of young people who are unemployed and they don't know where to look for information. So we've brought in over 300 companies, and these are both private and public mm -hmm. sector, who are going to come and give exhibit and give young people information about where they can get access to jobs, what skills programs they have, um, and also how if those who are interested in entrepreneurship, where they can get involved. Some of the very exciting partnerships we've brought on board is Microsoft and Google, because we want to introduce young people to this fourth industrial revolution. And exactly what does it mean? Because as much as we celebrate mm. the advancement of technology and so forth, it also does mean the withering away of some of the jobs. I gave an example that we no longer have petrol attendants in, um, in much of Europe. That trend is going to come here, but we need to ready our people. But importantly, get them ready for jobs of the future. But has that been defined, though, as in even within the context of Gauteng? Because uh, they're all very different yet dynamic cities, and therefore the circumstances ar around which you even identify or qualify what the future of work is would then be different too. It certainly is. I mean, it's diverse, like you're saying. Everybody's on their phone. We have now what we call social media celebrities. And these are all rather influencers. These are young people who traditionally you would have expected people to become popular or famous through going through TV and so forth. But that's not longer the medium. You've got young people now who are on Instagram and um, YouTube and etc. And they've become now influencers who big brands are taking them on and they, they now do the promotions for them. It's not only that you've got young people who want to get into coding. Coding is one of the programs that will be introduced to young people at the expo. So it's a variety of things, but working together with Google and Microsoft, we've ensured that they give young people up the broad spectrum of what is out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen with Pretoria it being largely a Wi-Fi city for most parts. With those partnerships, is that something that you're looking at in Gauteng as well? Because if we're talking about accessibility, if we're talking about affordability, that has to be a consideration. It's a huge consideration. Um, and that's why we shouldn't be call, uh, shocked when calls like our time is fall are so popular with young people because everybody's on their phone. That's how we connect with each other. They're on their WhatsApps and so forth. So data is a critical um, avenue that we need. And what we've done, because the department also creates libraries, what we have ensured is that in the libraries that we build, there must be Wi-Fi connection. Because we want young people to be connected with what is going on, uh, to be able to, to get information that they require. But as much as they are there, we've also said that we must be innovative with how we build our libraries. Reading is no longer popular. So how do we make the culture of acquiring information um, interesting and accessible to everybody and you can only do that through Wi-Fi connection and making sure that everybody's connected. I, I want to look at your portfolio now. Sport by its very nature is about participation but I'd want, I'm wondering within the context of what we're discussion, discussing rather how would you ensure greater inclusion and also ensuring that we bridge the divide that exists between cultural, ethnic and, and build greater cohesiveness? You know, sports, arts, um, sports and arts rather, are platforms that are, are really, it's the, probably the only platform that creates a, an even le uh, playing field for everybody. I mean, you don't have to be rich to have a talent. You know, so it allows people from all backgrounds, whether it's, jace, uh, it's gender, race, class, and so forth, to be able to compete against one another, purely on the, your God-given gift. So we identify how critical sport is in building social cohesion. It's funny that you speak of inclusion. One of the projects that the department has taken on, which is what we started with, was to say you've got young people that are coming from everywhere. 
all over South Africa and rural parts of the provinces and so forth, all of them looking for their big break and they come to Gauteng, they come in floods looking for to be discovered and looking for their big break. But where do they end up? They knock on every door. And when they don't get uh, the response that they require, some end up on the streets and they end up performing for individuals as you land on the robots, you know, mm. just as a sign of them saying, look, I'm here, look at me. And they sit there performing on the streets hoping that there might be some talent agent or someone that may pick them up. We've said that as a department, we must go out and reach out to these people, and we've already started. So we've taken some of these young people on board. You'll see them even tomorrow. They will be performing, because we understand how critical it is for them to be integrated into the mainstream, and government should play that part. I mean, I, I was listening, when you spoke about influences earlier on, and I was thinking about we need to also be looping into that conversation meaningful and sustainable employment so how do you ensure that because um, sport in itself is should be a lesson in effort in victory in managing wins and losses it, i mean it's such a tricky i mean if you look at sport and you look at entertainment very competitive industries highly competitive. Um, so we need to teach individuals that beyond your talent, what are the other areas within these sectors where you can be able to advance yourself? Because some of them are age restrictive, um, rather because, I mean, for sports, you can only play till a certain level or till a certain age and so forth. So we need to ensure that people diversify as much mm -hmm. as possible within the areas that they're in so that they're able to sustain themselves. We have a lot of artists who end up dying as paupers. How do we prevent that from happening? Because it doesn't make sense that you could have an artist who can boom one day and then the next thing they're completely forgotten. How do we make sure that they become as dynamic as possible in the area that they are but remain relevant? And what about exploitation? Because unfortunately, some of these industries are interlocked with these kind of social challenges. The kind of programs that you're looking at launching that will at least insulate young, ch young children from this, what are they? And which industries are you targeting? So we have camps also, and we wanted to ensure that we invite Especially, I mean, I'll speak about the entertainment industry, for example, where there is quite a lot of exploitation that happens. You have a young person who might, because of the excitement of knowing that a big recording label has signed you on, but you don't actually look at the fine print mm. of what your contract entails. So we need to educate people better so they can make better decisions on how they structure their contracts so that they protect themselves, importantly, and are able to ensure that the partnerships they, they enter into are equally beneficial for themselves and those that have, they've entered with. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you so much for us. having us. MEC for Arts, Sports and Culture, Mbali Lope.